Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Flirk case for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Let's get started. For those of you wondering what the Flirk case is, in my opinion, it's one of the best cases for the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. The case itself acts as a giant heat sink and it makes the Raspberry Pi cooler. It works extremely well. And while some people may argue that the Flirk case isn't the flashiest case out there in comparison to something like this here, the Super Kentaro, I would argue that the Flirk case has a nice, smart, and sleek look to it. I reached out to Flirk directly because I wasn't sure if the case for the Raspberry Pi 3 would work with the Raspberry Pi 3B+. The reason being because the chip on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus is slightly higher than the Raspberry Pi 3. And Flirk let me know that they're including a thinner thermal pad that connects the chip to the case for people who have a 3B Plus. Opening the case here, it's just a sleeve on a cardboard box. Pull the sleeve off, open the box up, and the Flirk case is inside. Opening this up, the very first thing I can see is a special bag for the 3B+. You can see a thermal pad in here as well as some screws. And in the foam wrap is the Flirk case itself. This is the exact case that works with the Raspberry Pi 3. So this is a nice simple looking case. It's all metal around the outside. On the top and bottom are plastic pieces. It's got the branding of Flirk all the proper cutouts for the Raspberry Pi. So this is basically everything that's in the box. I wanted to point something out here though. So you can see the case, you can see the bottom of the case, and you can see two plastic bags. If you have the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, you do not need this secondary plastic bag here. You will just need the bag that's labeled 3B+. Plus. The second bag, which was included inside of the case, is for the Raspberry Pi 3B. It has a thicker thermal pad that will not work with the 3B+. Here's a quick view on the difference in pad thickness. The thermal pad on the left is for the 3B+. The thermal pad on the right is for the Raspberry Pi 3B. So the next step is for me to place the Raspberry Pi in the case. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that the computer chip from my Raspberry Pi, as well as the post here from the case itself are both cleaned off. Things like oils from your hand, uh, pet hair, dust, any sort of debris that gets on either the chip or the post can actually interfere with the cooling itself. Both sides of the thermal pad have a film on them that you will have to remove. Now, I do recommend removing one side of the film first, mounting it to the Raspberry Pi. Once it's on the Raspberry Pi, remove the other side of the film before you place it in the case. I found the easiest way to place the Raspberry Pi in the case is to start with the side that has the HDMI connection. That kind of centers the board itself in the case and makes things a heck of a lot easier. Before you drop the board down on the CPU post, make sure all four holes on the bottom where the screws go are lined up. Once it's in, press very, very gently on the part of the board that has the CPU chip touching the case. Again, be very gentle because if you press the board in the wrong area and apply a lot of force, you could damage the board. Next up is to place the back of the case on and put the screws in. You don't need to make sure that these screws are the tightest in there. If they're in snug, that's good. The Raspberry Pi has been installed in the case. Everything seems to line up. And there's also nice space here for access to the SD card. I want to apologize too for the quality of the photos right now. I was originally going to put these into a chart, but then I figured I might as well show you how the stress test actually looked. So there were two stress tests that I did, and I'll leave a link in the description for the website that shows how to do those two tests. One is stress, the other is CPU burn. CPU burn is highly intensive compared to stress. So on the left of the screen here is the stress, on the right is the CPU burn. Now this is after 10 minutes. So you can see stress kind of leveled off around 40.8. It did get up to 41.3, but it leveled at 40.8 and kind of just stayed there. And CPU burn on the right got up to 70.9 after 10 minutes, 
but it floated around between 70.9 and 70.4. You can also see it dip to 69.8 at times. So it was kind of leveling off around that. So to sum it all up, this Flirk case is pretty awesome. I like the way it looks. I like the way it functions. You can feel the heat during the stress test dispersing around the case. The case heats up quite a bit. The included thermal pad seems like a really good fit. And overall, if you are using this for something like RetroPie and overclocking, I would highly recommend the Flirk case. That's all I've got for today. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you everyone, take care.